Brian Ferry, welcome to Show Studio. Um, we're here to talk about your friend Isabella Blow, but I want to start by asking a little bit about the film that's been put in the exhibition, which we were talking about before, because you provided the soundtrack to that, and it's um, when she walks into the room, which is her favourite mm. song, isn't it? Well, it's her favourite song of mine, anyway. <laughs> um, and uh, the, yeah, the last time um, I saw it, Izzy, was when I, I did a show at Oxford. Um, just a few weeks uh, before she died, actually, and um, she came to that, and uh, she, um, yeah, she stayed the night at the same hotel we were staying at, and in the morning she was saying that you know that was her favorite, favorite song, and um, so my last memory of her is me driving off for, uh, on the rest of my tour and. Her running behind the car <laughs> and waving, and uh, in some kind of Indian sari at the time, she was wearing some sort of exotic outfit, and as as she was, you know, wont to do, and um, yeah, she she loved music, mm. and uh, she loved dancing around, and and as you know, probably dancing on tables, anything, uh, <laughs> flinging her clothes off, or, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, she she was um, she she liked music a lot. She was a very very physical girl. You know. mm. How did you first meet Izzy? Because you were married to one of her friends. I was, yeah, and uh, a very close friend of hers, uh, uh, Lucy. And um, I met her in New York the first time, I think, when she was um, she was actually married, and um, I think she just was moving there from uh, Texas mm -hmm. and although I must have met her before that actually in England when she'd come home from Texas. Anyway, I really got to know Izzy well in New York and she was working in some kind of uh, a small boutique of some kind um, and um, I became a kind of you know, really good friend of hers and uh, yeah, we became very close over the years. What was it that mm. you gelled over? What was it that... Oh, it was probably um, humour as much as anything. Um, and I loved her high, high spirits and I loved her, her laugh. She had a very dirty laugh. <laughs> and, um, and she would always, you know, kind of erupt and shriek at anything. And uh, I don't know, we just got on really well. I guess I'm quite withdrawn and quiet as a rule. And she is the opposite. She was uh, very vivacious and uh, uh, you know very high spirits, which is you know um, ironic when you consider what happened uh, at the end. But um, in the early days uh, with Izzy, we had a lot of fun, and she'd come on holiday with me and, and me and my family, and. Um, uh, uh, lots of memories of lots of different locations and um, after I uh, after I divorced uh, she became a kind of surrogate mother to my children all four boys and she was um, she was actually godmother to one of uh, to the oldest one Otis but uh, she kind of looked after all of them and mm -hmm. they were, uh, she was uh, it was a great sadness for her that she couldn't have children have and, uh, and anyway, my boys were there and uh, so many times she would come down for the weekend and you know, spend the weekend w with me and the boys and um, she'd be kind of leaping around at breakfast in couture outfits, <laughs> hats of course and uh, frying eggs and bacon and whatever <laughs> and uh, just making them all laugh. and. Uh, uh, I loved having her around. You said before <laughs> she was very exuberant. Was she quite naughty? Did she used to get uh, you into scraps? Outrageous. She, <laughs> loved, she loved being outrageous and sort of, um, uh, you know, trying to <laughs> embarrass me probably. But <laughs> so I didn't like attracting attention, but she loved it. And um, But she always managed to kind of pull herself out of scrapes because even though she was madly eccentric, she was very uh, down to earth. There was a very earthy mm -hmm. side to her, so she could talk with equal pleasure to a countess or um, a maid in a hotel or mm -hmm. whatever, you know. 
and so she, she'd always be chatting away to everyone, and uh, that was a great kind of quality, you know. Um, Did you find so she, so she wasn't in any way uh, a snob, you know. Mm. Uh, she was uh, very interested in the world and different kinds of people. Did you find that quite inspirational, both, I guess, as a friend, but also you mentioned that she loved music. Did you find that kind of exuberance and vibrancy? Did that inspire you in a creative way? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but, but I think she would also respond to, uh, to kind of uh, sad music as well. She wasn't always kind of leaping around. Uh, uh, so I think she was quite a soulful girl. And uh, she loved talking. And I loved listening. So it was a great combination, really. Yeah. So I'd just sit, you know, and wind her up, and off she'd go. And, uh, and I like being entertained, really. And uh, even though I guess I'm an ent entertainer professionally, uh, in private, I, I love having uh, animated people around me to mm. kind of cheer me up <laughs> <laughs> or take me out of my own thoughts. And uh, so Izzy was fantastic, you know, whether she's walking around your garden you know, teetering around your garden in extraordinary heels, <laughs> or, um, yeah, or, you know, going out to dinner or flying, I remember flying over the, <laughs> over the Atlas Mountains with, with her and Detmar in this tiny plane, and that was just hilarious, everything was hilarious, and uh, she really cheered up the, um, uh, things enormously, you know. Mm. I want to talk a little bit, because you've, you've explained it seems like she did a lot for you, but you did a lot for her. It was you that put her forward for a job at Vogue, is that right? I just rem I rem vaguely remember kind of just you know, encouraging her to go and see uh, Anna Winter, who um, uh, I was actually renting a house from Anna and her husband at the time in the, in the West Village. So we, you know, I knew her a little bit. and. Um, I remember suggesting to Izzy that she ought to do that because mm. she was so into clothes, so into fashion, but she hadn't had any kind of entree into that world. And, mm. uh, and um, so I, I would, yeah, that's one good thing I did was kind of encourage her to go and um, do that because it became her life. And uh, she brought a lot of pleasure and um, uh, energy to the fashion world, you know, to mm. the people in it which is a kind of notoriously kind of cruel, I would say, uh, can be a rather cruel world. Mm. And, you know, uh, cold and shallow in a way. Um, and I think uh, she was an unusual character to be placed in that setting. You because know? she had so much She was so much warmth and, mm. and um, yeah. But she did have a very good eye. Yeah. Um, um, she was more extreme than I would ever be. But uh, I did appreciate, you know, the, the things she did. She had some wonderful ideas and, and the energy to push them through, mm. you know, when uh, a lesser um, talented you know, fashion editors might sort of um, Follow the party line. Yeah, Izzy would kind of be brave. trying to, yeah, bravely kind of create new, brave new worlds. Did she ever try and dress you up? Or? Uh, not really, no. Yeah. But she said, oh, "Darling, I love Brian. I love that hat." Or I said, "If I was wearing a beret or something," <laughs> and she would, she would just laugh and think how wonderful it was. And so she would encourage you to do, to be more uh, out there, more extreme. Mm. I want to talk a little bit about the more than this image, you know, with the oh. the ship hat. And, and oh yeah. Tell me about the the process behind that, because that's a very Izzy image. Um, well, yeah, of course, Izzy had this amazing bond with Philip Tracy, mm. and uh, she, you know, she virtually lived in his store. Which is, for a while, I lived around the corner uh, from Elizabeth Street, where. Philip's shop is, and Izzy was on the, around the other corner right, on Eaton Square, mm. and that was a, a good time uh, for us. Uh, but yeah, um, no, I just wanted to to do something that I hadn't done before. Because so with every um, artwork for an album, 
that comes out. You're, you're trying to th think of something that you hadn't done before, mm. and I thought, oh, doing it with um, one of Philip's hats, you know, and this would be cool. And this amazing galleon hat that he had, I thought, even though he had used it before somewhere, I thought it would, it, you know, my audience would never have seen it. Yeah. And, uh, and I very much wanted to work with uh, Nick Knight, who was, who was the photographer. Um, and it, yeah, it was a great creative team. And um, uh, yeah. It seems you it have lots of yeah. happy memories of her, which, you know, you touched on it before, and I don't want to push too much, but you said, you know, it's hard to tell what she went through, given how exuberant she was. Is that your memory of her, that? Well, I saw, I saw the, the the last few years, which were very sad, when she would go into the, uh, depressions, and um, and I would just try and talk about, you know, basically, I don't know, just say, yeah, it's low, you know, don't be so silly, and whatever, and try and talk talk about into a better mood, you know, about life and what the possibilities were for her. And she was very, very. Um, worried about money, you know, that was a huge problem because she liked uh, extravagance and mm. uh, even though she was very, very kind and generous, so she, she could just as easily spend you know, <laughs> her, her, her yearly wages on a present for somebody mm. as for something for herself. And, and uh, yeah, she was always, I think, a bit. Um, bitter and sad about the fact she hadn't, um, you know, made a lot of money from her work. Yeah. And that was sad. Uh, uh, yeah. But her legacy, I think, will be great optimism and... Very much so. And I think um, going around the exhibition, uh, which I did the other day, you know, just reminded of all the... Uh, the, the better moments of, of, of her life, really. Brian, thank you so much. Thank you.